Hey, Sarah's friend. You come to enlist at long last? Start earning your stripes with the Vanguard? Well, all right. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard Orientation Hall. You can get started at any of the registration terminals. The system will walk you through the rest. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. beginnings of the United Colonies, but still, a tremendous undertaking. I've probably got every display in this place memorized at this point. In 2050, From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. Those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Varun revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. I am beginning to find this presentation reductive and annoying. It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House Varun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war, the Serpent's Crusade. The Freestar Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC medical star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the settled system's first intergalactic conflict. 
the Nereon War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Nereon to join the collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Star Collective would take issue with the way the colony war is represented here. Few settled worlds were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the free star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, Repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. I bring her here almost every day to stare at this thing. One of my slates said Terramorphs can control people's minds. But that can't be true. In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort, Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city seemingly out of nowhere on a scale never before seen in recorded history. 
valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. After the devastation wrought by the Colony War, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces, and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away, accessible only in cases of dire emergency. But the Collective had another demand, that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. United Colonies in the interest of peace and galactic security agreed. In 2311, three United Colonies senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi, and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Ve Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. After everything, it is almost impossible to believe that the armistice happened. But I admit I am glad it did. The settled systems have benefited. not pay me enough to get in one of those things. Ah, 
Ah, you must be our new applicant. Of course. You'll be running through a high-realism combat flight simulation, engineered by members of the UC science staff, right here in MAST. Your task is to defeat at least three tiers of simulated opponents. Accomplish that and you pass the exam, and can then proceed on to your probationary mission. However, if you defeat more than three tiers of enemies, your required enlistment time for citizenship will be reduced, and your enlistment bonus increased. But you're welcome to try as many times as you like before returning to Commander Tuwala to proceed on to the next step in your application process. We'll only keep the highest score you manage to achieve in there. Vanguard assignments can often include both space and ground combat. It'd be bad for both you and the United Colonies to not ensure you're adept in both capacities before sending you out on your first real assignment. While I can't answer that question directly, I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. Just head in whenever you're ready. This is the Mark 18 Flight Simulation Chamber applicant, currently in orbit around a high-detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair.
You may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score, or stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. Resuming the examination. New targets active. Upgrade active. Damage upgrade active. New ally active. Ally active.
Simulation reset. Prepare for your first opponent. Reset. Prepare for your first opponent. Reset. Prepare for your first opponent. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. We'll only keep your best run. If you don't have official business, we ask you remain in the lobby. Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? I like the fire, applicant. Let's get into it. So, looking at the data? Hit every mural in the orientation hall, huh? 
A test of preparation and thoroughness. Two traits the Vanguard values highly. Psychological results are all within expected levels. Navy doesn't have room for folks that'll fall apart the first time they're trying to outrun a homing missile. Oh, you found the debug system in the simulator. Nicely done. Curiosity and resourcefulness are skills our recruits need. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Clear tier five, huh? Damn impressive. I swear they start cheating at that level, but the techs claim it's fair. Either way, you've got the skills the Navy needs. If I had any reservations about flying with you, they are now gone. Well done. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and factoring in that you managed to utilize all the tools at your disposal, once you've successfully completed your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... only five years. You showed real potential in there. We want to make sure you're fighting on our side. Even authorized me to offer you a bonus in addition to your signing advance. Becoming a citizen of the United Colonies is important to you. It seems you are well on your way. Sounds like you're just the type of pilot the Vanguard's looking for. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? Fantastic. Then just follow me. Wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the stars. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities, and to uphold the values of the Vanguard, honor, Loyalty, self-reliance, in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy? Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is... comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau Ceti II. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti II count on you? That's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. What did you need?
thought she managed to limp back here at all. Pull it for leeches, get it fixed up, and let her know we'll have it ready as soon as we can. Ah, you are new probationary then? Crew Chief Herat, pleasure to be working with you. It's my job to make sure all you rocket jockeys are ready for anything that comes at you up there. Now, Manifest says we're fitting you out with one comms repair suite. In addition to the standard issue welcome kit all probationary pilots get for their first mission. Med packs, some small arms, couple spare ship parts, all the essentials in case of any surprises up there. My people will have everything on your ship before you lift off. Won't even know they were there. Hmm. So, paying a visit to the people of scenic Tau City 2. Nice easy one for your first job. Just keep your head on swivel and you'll come home safe. Any questions before you head out? Then I won't keep you. Make us look good out there, recruit. Come on. Sarah? I was beginning to wonder if you hibernate. Really quiet here. That is rarely a good sign.
case does not look to have been motivated by theft. That may make it worse. worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. What do we got here? Yeah, too clean to be one of the settlers. Or a pirate. You see on patrol, maybe? Yeah, make my day if you said you were a shock trooper out for a stroll. Vanguard, huh? Yeah, I expect they didn't. I'm Hadrian. I'm a... I was a researcher with the UC. I came here on a rumor of a... Well, I expect you saw the results on your way in. What's left of the settlers? The work of Oxisio Machina. A terramorph. One of the nastiest aliens humanity's ever crossed paths with. And this one, well, it's something of an anomaly. Possibly a worrying one. A terramorph? Here? Why did you not state that immediately? I sure could. Because to confirm my suspicions about this creature, I'm gonna need a tissue sample from it. And to get that, I need its corpse. But there is a way we can give ourselves an edge against this thing. The plant security system. The admin terminal's here in this building, but it needs its connection reset. And as I found out, that's not a one-person job. But if you can make it to the security outpost and restore the connection, I think I can get things back online. See if the settlers left us any other tools. Good. Once I see the connection reset, I'll get things underway on my end. Take care of yourself out there. And make sure you leave enough of that thing for us to get a sample.
Connection restored. I'll make this quick. Hmm. Plant's turrets took a beating. But I should be able to get you a couple of kill lanes. Just get the thing to chase you down the alleys between the buildings, and you'll lead it right into a crossfire. Oh, hello? I wish I'd found this earlier. You notice those sensors around the facility? Part of a livestock tracking Best system. Not leave should let you keep tabs on how close the Terramorph is. Not connected to this network. There should be a terminal in the adjoining room. Tune it to 183.5. Trackers reading green. And what's that sound? Security lockdown is active. Shit. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing and get in cover. It's on the move. Occasion we would be allowed to take a small piece. Uh, uh. The trophy? Uh, I suppose not.
tracker's gone quiet. I suspect it's either hiding or... Wait. You did it, didn't you? <laughs> Essence above, you just flatlined a terror morph. Oh, yeah. Taken care of. No big deal. <laughs> you didn't happen to grab me a tissue sample, did you? All right. I spotted a microscope downstairs. Let's see if we can't get to the bottom of this. Nothing. Maybe a flax can? No. Spectrograph. Damn. This equipment, it's not set up to do a proper analysis of our sample. But this terramorph being here, of all places, it doesn't make sense. Humanity's spread plenty of creatures in our travels across the stars. Pets, livestock, pests. But terramorphs? They're different. To our knowledge, no one's ever spread them intentionally. Yet somehow, they follow us. So when humans settle a world, 70 to 100 years later, terramorphs tend to just appear. No one knows how or why. Dangerous, but at least predictable. Talcetti, though, it's too young to have a native population. It's only been colonized 20 years. But then the other option, that someone captured one of the deadliest predators in the galaxy just to wipe out some settlers minding their own business? That seems awfully implausible. Which means we're either looking at a truly strange murder or a faster type of terramorph growth the results of which could be catastrophic. Terramorph outbreaks have taken down far bigger colonies than this one. You're right. We just need more information first. Time was, I had access to one of the best repositories of Terramorph research in the galaxy. Seems a natural place to start looking, if I can figure how to access it. But we also need to get this sample properly analyzed. Get confirmation on just how concerned we should be. Luckily, I think I know just the person to help with the sample. What would you say to delivering this to him for me? I'd do it myself, but I need to call in some favors. See if I can't get access to that Terramorph data. <sighs> Plus, maybe just pop by a hospital for a little bit. Clear it with your commander first if you have to. You can even show them this. My gene tag. Tell them Hadrian Sanan is worried there could be more attacks on the horizon. They should recognize the name. Oh, you don't understand what a weight off my shoulders that is. I need Dr. Percival Walker to put together a sample analysis for this thing. Full workup. He'll know what that means. I'm not sure exactly where to find him, but last I heard, he was contracting with the Trade Authority on Mars. There's a place called the Sixth Circle in Sidonia, a bar run by some old friends. I'll meet you and Percival there. And here, it's not a lot, but you've definitely earned it. Should cover the cost of fuel to Mars, at least. Now please, go check in with your commander. We need to know what we're dealing with.
The bright lights and reflections are almost enough to make you forget about those living down in the well. Look who's back. All set with that probationary mission? We can do your debrief and formally welcome you into the Vanguard whenever you're ready. A terror? What? How did you walk away with the terror morph tissue sample running comms repairs? What happened to the settlers? A gene tag? Let me see that. Hmm, Sanan. I know that name. Let me check the database. Huh. A lot of this data has been classified. Here we go. Service record. Wow. That's a lot of commendations. Seems like she served with distinction as... Co-head of a UC Xeno Weapons Division. Faced tribunal at the end of the Colony War. And was dismissed from duty. Guess that's why I'd heard the name before. If she's former Xeno Warfare, though, well, we can at least be sure she knows her aliens. Certainly seems that way. Did your survivor, Hadrian, does she mention why she thinks this sample is so special? She thinks there could be more of these? Well, this is one of the more surprising debriefs I've ever been a part of. But if Hadrian Sinan thinks this sample needs to get to Mars, then we're gonna make sure it gets to Mars. I'll take care of the clearances and ensure you get your credits. Consider these your first official orders. And here, so everyone knows you're working with the Vanguard. Welcome to the Navy, Captain. Vanguard's also got some custom ship modifications. You'll be cleared for access to them next time you're down at the spaceport. Talk to ship services. Now, if there wasn't anything else, I suggest you move out.